Okay, we will start. The next part of our chapter, as we have started the highway maintenance and the highway drainage system. Okay, in this chapter, the next part of is the highway drainage systems. So, to have the less maintenance of the highway, we should also think about the highway drainage system. Okay, why it is important to provide the highway drainage? Because the main cause or the main reason for the failures of the highway is the penetration or the presence of the water on the highway. Okay, if when the rain comes, the water it's coming on the road. If it is not properly carried out to the drain, what will happen? That water tries to penetrate into the road. Okay. So due to that, what will happen? Once the water is entered into the rain, uh, road, the, in the different courses of the road, uh, layers of the road, what will happen? It will tries to lose the bond between the, uh, the aggregates and the binder. Okay. And ultimately what also it affects on the gearing capacity also. If it lose the bond between the binder and the aggregate, what will happen after the uh, frequent flow of the traffic with the heavy load, it tries to break the bond between them and one by one, one by one slight aggregates will get separated from each other and they will take uh, the, then it will be offering the failure of the road. It may be the patches, it may be the cracks to the road. Okay, that might be happened due to the presence of water. Also, when the water enters into the pavement, what will happen when it goes to the uh, sub base force, base force? What will happen due to the presence of water or the moisture into that layer? The capacity that is the load bearing capacity of soil it is affected. Affected. Okay, so it is mostly Im most important to avoid the entry of the water into the pyramids, okay? So that the bearing capacity of the soil, it is maintained well, as well as the highway surface also maintained well, because water also affects on the highway surface. So for that uh, reason, first, the necessary and the important part is to provide the slopes on the road. Slopes in the form of the camber, sloping camber, it is provided on the road. Also, the longitudinal slope should be provided along the length of the road. Okay, the slope should be such that it should easily drain out or easily carry out the water towards the drainage. Okay, if the drainage is provided on the both side, the slope should be in the both side so that the drained water goes towards the drain. If the drainage system is provided at the one side only, like in the hilly roads, okay, mostly the drainage system is provided at the one side. Or it may be that the both side. Okay, in that uh, area, in the uh, curve, etc., horizontal curves, what will happen? The drainage is mostly uh, provided at the one side. Okay, so the water should be easily go towards the drain so that the proper slope should be provided accordingly, where, whether the drainage is at the one side or whether the drainage is at both the side. Okay, so highway drainage is also most. First important thing is what? To drain the water from road, okay? By providing the camber, that is uh, transfer slope, by providing the longitudinal slope, we'll drain the water. Now, whatever the water that is drained out from the surface of the road, it should be carried out properly, okay? Towards the whatever the canal, if it is there, okay? Whatever the water carrying it is system, it is there, okay? So how to carry out that water? So the proper drainage system should be provided. And also, whenever you are providing the drainage system, you should have to ensure about that the water, whatever it is present, or it comes into that drain, it should not be stored there only. Okay, if suppose we have provided the drainage system and the water is always stored there, so what will happen if the road is in cutting? Okay, if the road is in cutting and the water is stored into the drain, it will tries to enter into the sub base course, base course, sub grade. Okay. And it will try to harm the bearing capacity. Okay. So, also we should have to ensure about that the water should be properly drained out from the drainage also. Okay. The proper slope it is provided to the drainage as well. 
so that the water, whatever it is coming to the drainage system, it should be given to proper slope so that the, it, the water should be flowed out uh, by the gravitational force. Okay. So the first most important thing is what? Carry out the water from the road surface and then carry out the water from the drains. So the highway drainage system is very important. And also whenever we are providing the slopes to the camber, okay, on the surface of the road, we should also think or we should also ensure about that we should have to provide the slope to the shoulders as well. Okay, because after the surface, we have provided the shoulder. At least one meter of the shoulder we are providing. Okay, one or two meter shoulder it is provided. So we should have to ensure that whatever the slope it is provided on the road, that at least more than that slope it is provided to that shoulder. Okay, whatever the road sure, slope it is provided for the camber, shoulder should have the more slope than that. Okay, so that whatever the water it is coming on the shoulder, that also should be drained out very easily. If we have not provided the slope on the shoulder, what will happen? The water, whatever coming from the camber or from the surface of the road, it will come to the shoulder, but it stores there and only. Okay, so we have to provide the proper drainage system to drain out the water from the shoulder also, proper slope to drain out the water from the shoulders as well. If we have not provided the slope, the water will come on the shoulder and it will retain there only. And it will by timely, uh, as to the times goes, uh, it will penetrate into the uh, below soil. It will penetrate into the binder core, sub-base cores, base cores, like that. Okay. So we have to provide the slope to the shoulder also. So now we will see what are the requirements to provide the drainage, how to be provided, what is the different types, surface drainage, subsurface drainage, where it should be provided. Okay, that we will see now. <clears throat> so in the highway drainage system, we are going to see the introduction about what is the exactly highway drainage system. What are the significance of the drainage? What are the requirements to provide the highway drainage? Okay. Then the surface drainage, what is meant by the surface drainage? What are the different methods of uh, draining out the surface water? What is the shoulder drainage system? Median drainage, subsurface drainage, methods of the subsurface drainage, and the road construction in the water log area. If the water log area is there, how to provide the drainage? Okay. So we are going to see now this much content into the whole coming lecture. The first, so first is the, what is highway drainage? Okay, so the highway drainage is the process of removing and controlling excess surface and the subsurface soil water within the right of way. Okay, we have to remove as well as control the excess water, whatever it is coming on the surface, as well as subsoil of the layers of the pavement. We should have to remove and also control the, uh, the way of coming over. It should be removed towards the drains and it should be within the right of way. Okay, because we are providing the drainage in the right of way only. As we know the structure, uh, how much is should be the carriage way, how much should be the road way, how much should be the right of way that we have seen. Okay. So, in the highway drainage system, the highway drainage is the process of removing and controlling excess surface and the subsoil water within the right of way by providing what drainages. It includes the intercipation and the diversion of water from the road surface and the subway. Okay. Uh, the, whatever the drains that we are providing, it collects the water from the road surface as well as the water from the grades. Okay, subgrades, sub subsurface. Okay. Because uh, I, in the last chapter we have seen, we have also provided the drainage system in the subbase layer as well. Okay, we have to provide the drainage system into the sub-base layer also. We, have, uh, we also call it as the drainage layer. That water also should be drained out into the drainage. So, so that we should have to ensure about that 
whatever the highway drainage that we are providing, the highway drainage should be in the depth enough to collect all the waters from the surface course, subbase course, base course, as well as from the subgrade course also. So it should be provided well below the subgrade course also. Okay, that we will see. Then what is the what are the significance of the drainage system? What are the significance? Whatever the excess moisture it is present in the soil, which is causing the considerable lowering and its stability. Okay, whatever the stability of the soil, uh, the years that is present there, it will uh, affect on that stability of that particular layer. So. What is the important to drain out the water, which is whatever it is coming in, into that layer. Okay, so excess moisture into the subgrade causes the considerably lowering its stability. So it is most important to carry out or drain out the water from the subgrade side. Okay, because suppose we, uh, we have constructed road on the subgrade side, which is a black bottom side. As we know, black cotton soil exhibits very large swelling and shrinking property because the presence of the multiple uh, mineral into that. Okay, so it exhibits the high swelling as well as shrinkage property. Suppose if the water comes in contact with that soil, it will changes its volume abrupt. So we should have to ensure about that the excess excess moisture should not be there in the subgrade layer. Then increase in the moisture causes the reduction in the strength of a many pavement material like the stabilizer soil and the water bond material. Okay, because if we increase the content of water above the optimum moisture content, what will happen? Whatever the required water content it is there, because we have compacted the soil. Okay, uh, while we are laying the layers, we have compacted up to the optimum moisture content and to achieve the maximum dry density. If the water enters into that layer, what will happen? The content of water will go on increasing and ultimately what will happen? It will affect on the strength of that particular layer. Okay. The sustained contact of the water with the bituminous pigment causes the failure due to the stripping of bitumen from the aggregates like the loosening of a, or the detachment of a sum of the bituminous pigment layers and the formation of the pathways. As I have told earlier, if the water comes in the contact with the surface layer, it will try to lose the bond between the binder that is bitumen and the aggregate. So what will happen ultimately? One by one aggregate will get detached from the binder and ultimately what will happen? The path holes will get formed. The excess water on the shoulder and the pavement edges causes the considerably damages. Okay, if the excess water it is there and the retained on the soil, what will happen? It will affect the damage. It will get uh, give the damage to the water. Then in the clay. Soil, if the soil it is clay, then the what will happen if the moisture content it is uh, if the water content will increase into the clay soil, what will happen? It will cause the variation in the volume of the subgrade. And if the volume get changed, what will happen? If the volume of the layer, particular layer, it gets changes, the cracks will be formed on the pavement. Okay. High moisture content causes the increase in the wet and thus the increase in the stress and the simultaneously reduction in the strength of the soil. But if the moisture content will get increases, the weight and thus increase in the stress simultaneously, what will happen? Whatever it is the strength of that soil it is there, it will get reduced okay, due to the presence of water or increasing with the water content. Erosion of a soil from the top on a surface roads and the slope of the embankment cut and the hill sides also due to the surface water. 
okay if suppose uh, whatever the shoulders or the remaining part uh, of the except the surface layer if it is unpaved unsurfaced if it is the soil what will happen uh, due to the water the that portion of the road what will happen it will get eroded okay due to the uh, frequently rain frequency of the rain in that area if it suppose it is more and that portion of the shoulders or the end of the road it is not paved it is not uh, surfaced okay what will happen due to the regular drain of the water the that portion may have the chances of erosion of that soil in the cold region presence of water in the subgrade and the continuous supply of water from the groundwater can causes the considerable damage to that pavement due to the frost action okay i have told you earlier what is the frost action due to the presence of water into that pavement a sub layer layers whatever the layers are there suppose the water is there into that layer and if the temperature goes beyond very less uh, the temperature falls very uh, to the very less degree what will happen the water whatever it is there in that layer it may have chances to get melt and if the water is uh, whatever the water it is converted from the water water to the ice then what will happen the volume will get increases okay and if the volume increases ultimately there is a chances of production of cracks okay so due to this significance it is most requirement to provide the highway drainage system okay so what is the requirements of the high, providing the highway drainage system the surface water from the carriage bay on the shoulder should effectively be drained off without allowing it to percolate into the subgrade without allowing water to get percolated into the whatever the base layer sub base layer subgrade layer are there that water should be drained out towards the drains surface water from the adjoining land should be prevented from the entering the road if suppose the road it is formed into the cuttings and adjoining soil is above the level okay what will happen whatever the water it is there in this uh, adjoining uh, fields that will uh, enters into the sub layers layer what are the layers of the pavement are okay when the road it is formed into the cutting okay if the road is formed into the cutting what will happen water will tries to enter into the layers of the pavement okay to avoid that we should have to provide the highway drainage system flow of a surface water across the road and the shoulders and along the slope should not cause the formation of the cross ruts or the erosion okay by the frequent i have told now only due to the frequent flow of water in that particular area suppose it is not paved not surfaced well what will happen erosion of that soil it is possible to happen so that should not be happen that should have so that should care uh, that much care we should have to take and also it should not cause the ruts on uh, on the edges of the roads seepage and the other sources of a ground underground water should be drained off by the sub surface drainage system okay there are two types of the drainage system surface and sub surface by the surface drainage system we are removing the water whatever it is there on the surface layers if the water it is present in the surface below the surface layers that is in the sub surface layers that water also needs to be drained out and it is drained out by providing the sub surface drainage system and what are the sub surface and surface drainage systems how they are provided and uh, how they actually works that we will see in the coming slide highest level of ground water table should be kept well below the level of subgrade preferably by at least 1.2 meter okay before laying the road in that area we should have to study about the water table present in that area okay the highest 
level of water table up to how much height the water can come that should be below well below the subgrade layer and it is uh, at least 1.2 meter below the subgrade layer okay whatever the highest height of water that can be come to the water table that should be below the well below the subgrade layer and that should be at least 1.2 meter in the waterlogged areas specially special precaution should be taken if the waterlogged area it is there we should have to take more precautions because uh, the water table is at uh, it is on uh, very near to the uh, whatever the subgrade layers are there it is very near to that layer so the proper care that we have to take care in the water logged areas especially if the detrimental salts are present in the chlorine like it then it chlorine is likely to happen because of the presence of water logged area what is the problem it reacts with the water it reacts with the soil and forms the salty water salty soil there okay and ultimately it will lose the strength of that soil it will affect the strength of the soil due to the presence of water logged the salts it is present in the water it will react into with the soil soil and it will ultimately affect on the bearing capacity you might have observed in the water logged area whatever the soil it is there uh, you can observe the whitish layer it is observed on that soil because of the presence of salt Okay, now you see the first part it is the surface drainage and the uh, second part it is the subsurface drainage. Okay. Before that, we will see one video for that. Let me tell you about this amazing offer from Udemy. Right now, they're having one of their biggest sales of the year. So, if you're bored at home, cities, those dense congregations of people and buildings, have made possible economies and lifestyles our early ancestors could never have imagined. Whether you thrive in or despise the concrete jungle, there is no denying its benefits. Putting all the people, houses, jobs, stores, offices, and diversions in one place gives us humans opportunities that wouldn't be possible if we all lived agrarian lifestyles spread out across the countryside. But there are some negative consequences that come from cramming so much into such a small area. At no time is this more clear than when it rains. Managing the flow of runoff through a city is an immensely complex challenge that affects us in so many ways, from public safety to property rights, from the environment to the health and welfare of citizens. Hey, I'm Grady, and this is Practical Engineering. On today's episode, we're talking about urban stormwater management. This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream and Nebula. Get 26% off at the link in the description. More on that later. The water cycle is one of the most basic science lessons we learn. So basic, in fact, that it's easy to forget how relevant and important it is to our lives. Take a look out your window when it's raining, even when it's raining hard, and it doesn't <laughs> seem that significant. Some of the rain soaks into the ground, some gets taken up by plants, some gets caught in puddles, and some runs off downhill, usually into the street. One of the biggest challenges in a city is the proportions of all these different paths that water can take. All those streets, sidewalks, buildings, and parking lots cover the ground with impervious surfaces, which means that instead of water infiltrating, it runs off toward creeks and rivers, swelling them faster and higher and filling them with more pollution. 
One of the biggest impacts on the environment of building anything is its effect on how water moves above and below the ground during storms. Multiply that to the scale of a city and you can see how remarkably we modify our landscape. Instead of acting like a sponge to absorb rainwater as it falls, urban watersheds act like funnels, gathering and concentrating rainwater runoff. In this video, I want to walk you through some of the infrastructure cities use to manage this massive challenge and a few new ideas in stormwater management that are slowly taking hold in urban areas. Like most of the biggest challenges of building and maintaining a civilization, the negative impacts from adding impervious cover don't befall the property owner doing the adding, but rather the people downstream. Just like dumping pollution into the river carries it away to the next guy, it's easy to make bad drainage decisions into someone else's problem. That's why most large cities have rules about how to manage runoff and flooding when new buildings or neighborhoods get built. Drainage reviews are just a normal part of the process of obtaining a building permit these days. If you live in a major city, just do a search for your local drainage manual to see the kinds of things that are required. Increased runoff has been a problem since people started living in cities in the first place. And the first way we handled it was simply to get the water out and away as quickly as possible. That's because runoff creates flooding, and flooding causes billions of dollars of property damage and many lives each year. This solution is in the name we still use for how cities manage storms. Drainage. When it rains or when it pours, we try to give that runoff somewhere to go. Most cities are organized so the streets serve as the first path of flow for rainfall. Individual lots are graded with a slope toward the street so that water flows away from buildings where it would otherwise cause problems. The standard city street has a crown in the center with gutters on either side for water to flow. This keeps the road mainly dry and safe for vehicle travel while providing a channel to convey runoff. But the streets aren't the end of the line. Eventually the road will reach a natural low point and start back uphill or will have collected so much runoff that it can't hold it all in the gutter. At this point, the water needs a dedicated system to carry it away. In the past, it was common to simply put all the runoff from the streets directly into the sewage system. It's a well-developed network of pipes flowing by gravity out of the city. Why not use it for stormwater too? Well, there's actually a really good reason not to do that. At the end of each sanitary sewer system is a wastewater treatment plant that was almost certainly not designed to process a massive influx of combined sewage and stormwater runoff at the whims of mother nature. In the worst cases, these plants have to release untreated wastewater directly into waterways when it's too much to be stored or processed. That's why most cities now use municipal separate storm sewer systems, usually abbreviated as MS4s. These are networks of ditches, curbs, gutters, sewer pipes, and outfalls solely dedicated to moving runoff from everywhere in the city to the natural waterways that eventually carry it away. These inlets aren't just places for clowns to hang out. They usually represent a direct path between the street and the nearest creek or river. Just to be clear, there's not usually any type of treatment happening along the way. These sewers are not for waste. Whatever you put in the storm sewer system goes directly into a waterway, so please don't dump stuff in there. It's easy to see why cities try so hard to get stormwater out as fast as possible if you look at the floodplain. This is just the area most likely to be inundated during a major flood. Land is one of the most valuable things within a city, but its value goes way down if it's exposed to flood risk. No one wants to build something on land that could be flooded. That being said, humans are notoriously bad at assessing risk, and no matter where you look, you're likely to find development near creeks and rivers. Getting the water out quickly reduces the depth of flooding and thus shrinks the floodplain. That's a big reason why you see natural waterways in cities enlarged, straightened, and lined with concrete. You can see in my demo, for the same amount of flow, the channel with lots of vegetation moves water more slowly and thus at a higher depth. The channel with smooth sides gets the water moving faster and thus reduces the depth of flooding. But channelization isn't all it's cut out to be. It's ugly for one. No one wants a big dirty concrete channel as part of their surroundings. But channelization also worsens flooding downstream for the next guy and degrades the habitat of the original waterway. It didn't take long for cities to realize you can't just keep widening and lining channels to keep up with the increased runoff from more and more development. That's why most cities now require developers to take responsibility for their own increase in runoff. By and large, that means on-site storage for stormwater. 
Retention and detention ponds act like mini sponges, absorbing all the rain that rushes off buildings, streets, and parking lots, and releasing it slowly back into waterways. This shaves off the peak of the runoff with the goal of reducing it back down to or less than it was before all those buildings and parking lots got built. They also help reduce pollution by slowing down the water so suspended particles can settle out. On-site storage is a pretty effective solution and one you'll see everywhere if you're paying attention, but it still treats stormwater as a waste product, something to be gotten rid of. The reality is that rain is a resource, and natural watersheds do a lot more than just getting rid of it. They serve as habitat for wildlife. They naturally clean runoff with vegetation. They divert rain into the ground to recharge aquifers, and they reduce flooding by slowing down the water at the source rather than letting it quickly wash away and concentrate. That's why many cities are moving toward ways to replicate and recreate natural watershed functions within developed areas. In the US, this is called low impact development, and it includes strategies like rain gardens, vegetated rooftops, rain barrels, and other ways to bring more harmony between the built environment and its original hydrologic and ecological functions. It can also include better management of the floodplain by using it for purposes less vulnerable to flooding, like parks and trails. One low impact strategy is permeable pavement, and I have a video just on that topic if you want to check it out after this one. Okay, so we will see the surface drainage, how the road, uh, the water from the road, it is drained out. Actually, they, in the video, they have uh, give the demo of collecting the storm water of a city. Okay, now we are only discussing about the highways. Okay, so during the rain, what will happen? The part of the rain of water, as we have studied into the hydrology, okay, uh, the hydrograph that we have. Uh, you might have remembered in the hydrograph, whatever the water it is coming from the rain, the sum of the water will drain out from the surface, and sum of water will get percolated into the earth. That is seepage flow and the runoff that we call. Okay, sum of the water will get runoff, and sum of the water will get seepage. Okay, so that we need to understand first. Why during the running, uh, during the rains. The part of the rainwater flows on the surface and the part of the water will get percolate into the soil until it reaches to the groundwater table below the water table. Okay, It will flows through the soil until it will get reached towards the water table. If it uh, reaches towards the water table, it will retain there on with the water table until it will flows into the soil whatever it is there. So removal and the diversion of the surface water from the road way and the adjoining land is termed as the surface drainage. Okay, as we know, water, whatever the water coming from the rain, some of the water will get come on the surface and tra uh, travel along the surface and goes to the rain, drain. Okay, that is surface drainage. Some of the water will get percolate into the soil and forms a seepage flow through the soil up to when it comes in contact with the water table. So first we have to collect that surface water and also we have to collect whatever the subsurface water is there. To collect the, whatever the water which is there on the surface, that is called as surface drainage system. And if the water, whatever it is there, that is seepage flow, if we collect that, it is called as subsurface drainage. Okay. So the diversion and the removal of the excess soil water from the subgrid it is also termed as the subsurface drainage system. So there are many methods. Okay, there are many methods to drain out the surface drainage water. So these are the longitudinal side drains, then the catch drains or the inlet urban areas, providing the damp proof force providing the proper camber, providing the sufficient slope to the sides, keeping the level of carriageway at least 60 centimeter above the HFA. Okay, so 
these are the different methods for, for providing the surface drainage. We will see one by one. So in that, the first one is the side drains by providing the side drains. Okay. So see here, you can observe here. Here is the road. Surface for is as you are seeing. It is camber. It is given the slope for the camber is slightly provided. Then the shoulder it is there. The slope for the shoulder you can observe into the figure. The slope for the shoulder it is more than the slope of the camber. Then whatever the water it is coming on the camber it will drain out. Then it will comes on the shoulder. Then after the shoulder it will comes to the drain. Okay. So we should have to provide the more slope for the shoulder than the camber to drain out the water very easily. So water will not stay here or will not percolate here by the gravity it will drain out towards the side drains. Okay. So this is the figure of the side drains on the road which is provided. If this is for the, if the road is in embankment. So it is necessary to provide the side drain on the one side or on the both side. As per the given or as per the available topography, we will decide whether the side drain should be provided on the one side or the two side. It is depends on what it depends on the topography of that area. When the road is constructed in the embankment, okay, because the road are constructed in two ways. One is the providing the embankment, then we have to build the road over there and another is to form a cutting and provide the road. It depends on the RL and the topography of that area through which the road is, road is going. Okay. The side drains should be at least two meter away from the bottom edge of an embankment and also the depth of the side drain is 1 to 1.5 meter to prevent the entry of a drain water into the embankment. You can See here into the figure, whatever the side drain it is provided, it should be away from the road. Okay, the, whatever the drain, side drain is provided, it should be away from the road. It should be nearly about the two meter. It should be nearly two meter away from the road. And it should be also at the depth of at least one to 1.5 meter from the subgrade level. Okay, so see, this is the formation level of the road or the subgrade level, you can say. From this level of a road, above this level, the road is constructed. So from this level, the drain should be at least 1 to 1.5 meter below. This is clearly, you can observe through this figure. Okay, The drain should be at least 2 meter from the road and 1 to 1.5 meter at the depth from the whatever the bottom of the road it is there. Okay. So please uh, draw this figure. Everyone please draw this figure. This is an important figure. This is about two meter. And this depth is about one to 1.5 meter. Please draw this figure, everyone. See important figures. We should know how the drains are provided and what are the distance. This is minimum up to two meter. This is provided up to two meter. And this is one to 1.5. One to one point five meter. Okay. Draw this figure.
okay so this is what the first part that is providing the side drainage now you see and this is when the road is constructed into the embankment okay when this is the second figure when the road it is provided into the cutting okay if the road it is you can observe here this is the slope of the ground and if suppose the along this slope if the road we have to provide in the cutting depending on the topography of that area then we have to provide the drainage system like this into the cutting we have to provide the slope for the carriageway as well as slope toward the uh, shoulders then whatever the water it is coming from the carriageway it should be transferred to the drains easily okay so this is the way for providing the side drains into the row when the road it is in the cutting okay so the second case now first we have seen our second case is the providing the catch basin and the inlets in the urban areas okay uh, you might have observed when you are traveling on the road there are uh, many a times the drainage system it is provided under the road system okay so whatever the water it is coming from uh, on the road that is collected by the catch basin and transferred to the drainage okay so how the catch basins are designed you can see observe here so this is the street level whatever the water that is coming on the street that will be transferred to the catch basin and uh, along with the water there is a chances of uh, uh, having the whatever the floating matter debris etc with the water so we will provide one hood uh, you might have observed in the environmental engineering okay so we will provide a such a system called as food so that whatever the floatable particle it is there it will be there on the top side whatever the debris is or the settling particles are there that will be settled at the bottom and the remaining water will be collected through the sewer system okay because for whenever we are providing the sewer for the catch and drains it is provided if suppose this is the base level of the basin catch basin for the inlet chambers okay so above that some level we will provide the drainage pipe okay because whatever if the settling particles are there we should have to provide some area for the particle particle to get settled there okay and from above that water we will collect to the sewers so you can see here the catch basin is the structure like cam, uh, chamber constructed on the sewer line the water from the pavement surface is collected in the catch basin and then discharged to the sewer line okay whatever the water that is coming on the surface that is drained into the drained out into the basins and after that the way the the basins are provided at the various intervals of the time okay so very uh, they are provided in some intervals so to connect, connect that basin we have provided a sewer line okay and whenever we are providing the sewer line that we should have to take care that it should be at certain level above than the base of the chambers okay so that whatever if the settling particles like soil etc it is drained out with the water that should be settled at the bottom of the chamber it should not be traveled along with the sewers that because it may how uh, it may create the problem of chucking of the lines etc okay so surface water it is collected through the basin and uh, transferred through, through the sewer lines the catch basin is provided with the grating to the pavement the entry of the rubbish into the drained system okay so also the catch pits are provided for the grating of the prevent the entry of the rubbish whatever the uh, rubbish or the floating matters it is there that should be provided with the in the catch basin as you can see here the next is the inlet before that please draw the rough figure of the catch basin draw fast 
by the figure you can easily understood the what is the motto or the theory behind that okay. draw the figure Draw the figure quickly. Is it over? Draw the rough. So after the catch basin, it is the next part of the collecting water is the inlets. Inlets is nothing but the concrete box, which is provided to uh, grating the either at the top or the side of the footfall. Okay. So we can observe from the figure, it is provided at the side, one side of the footpath so that whatever the water that is coming from the road, that will be uh, collected through the uh, below the uh, footpath and it is transferred to the sewer system. So see here, the concrete block box it is provided here. The water, whatever the it is there on the road that is entered through the curve, which has the opening. It is entered into the concrete box, then it is forwarded to the sewer system. Okay, the simple technique it is there, which is provided beneath the footpaths. The next is the shoulder drainage. For the quick drainage, it is necessary to ensure that the shoulder surface is properly sloped and free from the irregularities and the depressions. Okay, that I have told earlier. For the quick removal of the water, whatever it is coming from the surface to the shoulder, so that purpose, we should be ensure that the shoulder should have the more stiffer slope than the cumber, than the surface. Okay, so that the whatever it is water coming, that should be drained out easily and quickly from the shoulder. Because there is more chances to get water get percolated into the shoulders when we provide the straight shoulders. Okay, also we should have to take care that the undulations or the depressions, irregularities that should not be there on the shoulder. Because if the depressions are there into that depression, water will get stored and timely it will get percolated into the 
ground. So the depressions also should not be there on the shoulders. Irregularity should be also not should also not be there on the shoulder. In impervious type, it practiced to extend the subbase course with the drainage across the shoulder up to the side. Right? Okay, we can also extend the subbase course up to the shoulder to have the drainage system, whatever it is coming from the shoulder. And also, when paved shoulders are there, it should have the at least 0.5% steeper slope than the camber, subjected to the minimum of 3%. Okay, whenever we are providing the paved shoulders, it should have the at least 0.5% of slope steeper than the camber, which should have minimum of 3%. Means what? Minimum 3% of the slope, it should be maintained. And that slope should be more of 0.5% more than the slope of the camber. Okay. The unpaved shoulder should have the further steeper 0.5% uh, steeper along the horizontal curve should on the inner side of the curve. Okay. If the road is paved, it should have the 0.5% steeper. And if it is unpaved, it should have more 0.5% more for the steep slope than the camber. Okay. So providing the more stiffness or the steeper slope to the shoulder is nothing but the only one motto is that whatever the water it is there, it should be drained out quickly because mostly what will happen, the shoulders are unpaved. Okay. And if the shoulders are with the uh, soil or the aggregates, boulders, etc. Okay, so what will happen though? If water will have chances to get retained on that shoulder, it will easily will get penetrate into the shoulder, and ultimately it will travel towards the base course of the course. Okay, so that this is the only motto to provide the steeper slope to the shoulders to drain out the water quickly from the shoulder. So that should be provided in the inner side or the outer side. Uh, in the other hand, where the high rate of superrelation is there, the shoulder should be outside shoulder should be kept, kept leveled or the rounded. Okay, it depends on the rate of super elevation or how much super elevation it is provided, depending on that. The shoulder stiffness is also various, steeper or the uh, slope of the shoulder. We can observe here. The typical cross section it is shown here. This is uh, the middle section is the carriageway of the two lane road. Then after that, paved shoulders are provided, and after that, unpaved shoulders are provided. Along with that, the granular material filter it is provided so that whatever the water that is coming, that should be drained out easily towards below the uh, shoulders, and then also the filters are provided here. We can observe into the figure. Let's draw this figure. Everyone, please draw this figure quickly.
Okay. Okay. So So this is what about the shoulder drainage that is provided. Just a second. Could I get a word for? Okay. So, uh, so these are the methods of the uh, surface drainage that we have seen to by providing the side drainage systems okay in the logical direction when the road is in the embankment when the road is in cutting by providing the uh, catch drains by providing the inlets by providing the shoulder drainage systems okay so these are the various methods uh, to drain out the surface drainage water, water by providing the surface drainage okay then also there is another system or another way to provide the drainage system that is the subsurface drainage system Okay, and this is provided for what? For removing, removal or the diversion of the excess soil water from the subgrade. It is termed as the subsurface drainage. Okay, this is mainly important and factor for minimizing the moisture content from the subsoil, that is the subgrade soil. Okay, our motto is to maintain the moisture content in the subgrade soil because suppose if the clay soil it is available in the subgrade layer due to the presence of the moisture if the moisture content is increases the clay soil exhibits the large swelling property okay if the sudden volume will get changed so what will happen ultimately the it leads to the failure of the pyramid okay so it is most important to maintain the uh, moisture content from the subside okay sub subgrade side so the change in the moisture of the subgrade are caused by the following so what are the reasons to change the moisture why the moisture content in the subgrade layer it is uh, changed so the reasons are due to the fluctuation in the water groundwater table okay if the groundwater table beneath that layer it get fluctuation okay so due to that also the water content or the moisture content will alter from the subgrade also due to the seepage flow also due to the percolation of the rain water into the soil or due to the movement of the capillary water if the capillary pores are there present beneath the subgrade soil so due to the capillary action the water may have chances to come into subgrade layer and it will lead to the increase of the moisture of that layer. Ultimately, what will happen? Also, the bearing capacity of that soil will get reduced due to the increase in the moisture content. So, we need to avoid these cases. So, that purpose, we are providing the subsurface drainage system. So, in the subsurface drainage system, it is practiced to keep the variation of the moisture in the subgrade to the minimum okay we should have to ensure about that whatever the water it is coming in that uh, sub layer the variation of that water or the moisture content should be the minimum variation then also mm -hmm. when the sub road it is in the cutting and the water sipping from the sides okay if suppose the water seepage it is there uh, whatever the water it is entered into the ground the seepage flow might be of a due to that water seepage uh, when the road is in cutting there is a chances of water seepage through the uh, go through the whatever the uh, sub grade soil it is there okay when the road is near to the foot of a hill and is likely to damage by the water flow down to the hill because in the hilly area there is a huge amount of run okay so if the road it is there at the foot of a hill in that area also there is a chances of increase in the moisture content of the soil so when a road is passing through the plain area and water is likely to accumulate from the sides okay because if the road it is not in the embankment above the uh, field that is at the side so if the road it is with the level of the field 
So what will happen, whatever the water it is there, it will try to enter into the layers of a pure mat. Where the water rises up to the subgrade by the capillary action. Okay, if this water table it is there below the subsoil, if there are pores to uh, have the capillary action, then at that time what will happen? The water table may get increased. So it is also necessary to check whether the capillary action it is there. And if it is there, we need to uh, take the certain action regarding that. And how to reduce the capillary action? That we will see it is there in the next slide. Where the subgrade soil is affected by the drain passing near the road. Okay. If the drainage is there near the road and the drain is passing near the road, and if the proper depth of that drainage is not maintained, whatever the water it is there, that how the chances to percolate into the subgrade soil. At that time, also, what will happen? Due to that, the moisture content of that soil will get increased. So, that purpose only, the drainage should be provided at least 1 to 1.5 meter below the soil level. Okay. Then how to do the subsurface drainage? First thing is to the lowering the water table, then the controlling the surface flow and controlling the capillary water. So these are the major three factors that we need to control. First is what? We need to lower the water table. The second is to control the surface flow through that layers, okay, below the pyramid. And also third one is the controlling the capillary rises. Okay. So we will see one by one. The first is the lowering the water table. In order to, in order to that, the subgrade and the pavement are not subjected to the excessive moisture, the water table should be kept at least 1 to 1.2 meter below the subgrade. Okay. So before laying the road, we should have to understand at what level the water table is there and our soil subgrade soil whatever it is there it should be at 1 to 1.2 meter above the subgrade layer okay above the water table okay so whatever the distance it is there from the soil and the water table it should be at least 1 to 1.2 meter in place where the water table is at high level to take the road formation on the embankment of height not less than 1 to 1 parameter is the best approach. Okay, If the water table is at height, what we should do? We should give the embankment, we should form the embankment and then we can uh, take the road above that. We should increase the height of the road by providing the embankment of 1 to 1 point. That we can also do. But when the formation level is at or below the general ground level, it is necessary to lower the water level. Okay. But now we cannot go for the embankment. We have to go for the uh, cutting or we have to go with the level of the ground only. Okay. That is our option only. And also the water table is there. So in this case, we need to go for the lowering of the ground water table. And how to lower that? I have given one figure here. We can observe. And also, if the soil is relatively permeable, it may be possible to lower the water table by constructing the longitudinal drain trenches. Okay, how we can lower the water table by providing the longitudinal drainage trenches by providing the trenches. Okay, uh, whatever the water it is there, we can collect it into the trench and then we can drain it out by providing the pipelines and the filters of the sand and the top of trenches is covered with the clay seal. Okay, if we provide the trenches, top of the clay uh, layers, whatever it is there, we should have to seal so that the uh, only, uh, we should have to provide the filter so that only water can enter. The soil may, it should not get entered into the drains then that drain water can be drained out by the pipes. The depth of the trench depends upon and now at how much depth we should provide the trenches. It depends on the requirement of the lowering the water table, how much 
uh, lowering of the water table it is required how much the distance between the drainage and the trenches what is the distance between drainage and trenches it is should be provided and the what is the type of the soil okay. depending on this parameter we will adopt the depth of trench and how it is updated we can see here so this is the desirable minimum depth of the water table and this is the lowered level of the water table this is the dotted line whatever the dotted line it is shown here this is the original ground water level okay whatever the ground water table it is there originally that is shown by the dotted line and after providing the trenches see here we have provided the trenches on the both side by providing some filter like the sand the water whatever it is there it will filter through the sand and come into the drains but we have provided the pipes here and that drained water will collected out through that pipe so that from this dotted line water table will get lowered up to this level this is the the head uh, you can observe here lowered water table due to the longitudinal uh, drains it is provided it is shown here okay so this much lowering we can achieve by providing the drains here okay so drain pipe by providing the drain pipe Also, if the soil is relatively less permeable, the lowering of the groundwater may not be adequate. Okay, hence, in the additional of this, we should provide the longitudinal drains, transverse drain to have the uh, to be installed at the suitable intervals in the effectively drain of the water. Okay, we, we can see here if the soil is relatively less permeable, we can observe into this figure. Also, the plan as well as the section it is shown here. Along with this drain pipes, we can also provide the transverse drains as well. Okay, so what will happen? The water will collect it through the transverse, then then transfers to transfer towards the longitudinal drain the pipe. Okay, so we can provide in this manner as well. You can see here in the plan. First, the transverse drains are provided, then the longitudinal drains are provided. First, the water is collected to the transverse drain, and then it is collected, traveled, and collected through the uh, longitudinal drain pipes. Then the second is the control of the seepage flow. We can also collect the water, or we can also uh, provide uh, some system to control the seepage flow when the ground water is. As well as the impervious strata below are sloping, the seepage flow is likely to exist. If suppose water table is not there, but if suppose the seepage flow it is there due to the impervious data available in that region along with the slope of the road, then how we can control the seepage flow? So if the seepage zone it is there at the depth less than 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 meters. From the subgrade level, longitudinal pipe drains in the trench filled with the filter material and the clay seal may be constructed to the intercept the flow. Okay, how we can uh, control the seepage flow? Suppose if the seepage flow is below the one meter, then it is okay. But suppose if the seepage flow it is less than 0.6 to 0.9 meter, then we have to provide the longitudinal pipe drains to Avoid the seepage flow through the pavement. And how it can be achieved? We can observe here. So see here, this is the slope of the ground, and also this is the seepage line, dotted line. You can see here. This is the original seepage line. The seepage flow is coming from the sloping ground towards the road, and this dotted line indicates the original flow root of that seepage flow, and Due to we have provided here the filter as well as the side drain pipe, the longitudinal drain pipe. Due to this provision of the drain system, what will happen? The seepage flow will get lower. You can observe here the original seepage flow, it is there shown by the dotted lines. And due to the provision of this drain, what will happen? The seepage flow will get lower. Okay, so the, in this way, we can lower the seepage. 
line. You can observe here in this figure. And the last thing is what? Control of the capillary rise. Okay, because if the water it is, if the round water table it is available below the subgrade layer, sub subgrade soil layer, what will happen? Water can have the chances of raised due to the capillary action. Okay, and so how to avoid this water to come into the contact with the capillary action? We can provide the one stone layer which has the more words because we know the concept when the capillary rise will happen when it has the very less diameter of the voids you might have learned into the fluid mechanics etc when the capillary rise will happen when there is a very less uh, diameter of the pipe it is there as the diameter of that pipe get reduced capillary rise will be more so our motto should be what? We should provide the more words. Diameter words, diameter of the words should be more. So that what will happen? The capillary rise will not be half up. So we should provide the more amount of the words. And how we can achieve it? By providing the boulders, large stones, uh, large aggregates. Okay, so that the words can be achieved and the capillary rise can be controlled. We can observe here. So see here. We can provide the granular material with the large grain uh, sizes of the material we can provide so that the capillary rise will be arrested there. And also we can provide the impervious layer. Okay, we can also provide the impervious layer so that the water will not allow to pass through that layer. Okay, so these are the two ways to control the capillary rise. How? First is the by providing the granular material, large size of material are layer so that the, it will arrest the capillary rise and second thing is what we can provide the impervious layer so that the water the capillary rise it is there it can be arrested okay so these are the different methods of the subsurface drainage in that the most three important are these three water table raise how to control that seepage flow how to control that and the how to control the capillary flow okay so if you want, you can draw this figure. We will stop here only today. Mark your attendance to the chat box, then you can learn. Thank you for attending the lecture. You can draw this figure. After drawing the drawing this figure, you can left the lecture. Draw this figure also.